Hey guys, so I received a letter from I Want To Be Dominated. He wrote, Hello Liz, I love your videos and I was wondering if I could ask you something. I have recently discovered that I have been fantasizing about being put into chastity and being completely dominated by my girlfriend. I am already aware that I have a kink for being held down and pegged, but I'm afraid to tell my girlfriend even about this. Additionally, I enjoy wearing panties to work and I love wearing them around the house. I also like wearing naughty clothes for women, such as mini skirts and corsets, around my house. I want to tell my girlfriend about all these things, but I am afraid she will run off and not want to be with me. What should I do? Also, regarding chastity devices, are they safe? I have heard of boys being put into them and having their penis shrink by several inches when they discontinue chastity. And I have even heard it can cause erectile dysfunction and prostate cancer. I haven't been able to find any university studies or research on the subject and was wondering if you could help inform me about the topic. All right, well, let's tackle the girlfriend question first. You don't mention how long you've been together or if you even love her, but if you see a future with her, you should tell her everything you told me. Not just about what turns you on, but you should include that you're worried that she'll judge you and your fears have kept you from admitting what really turns you on. Sexual compatibility is super important in a long-term relationship. If you open up to her and she judges you and she's not open to trying your fantasies, then you know that you're both wrong for each other. She deserves to be with an authentic partner, someone who owns his desires and shares them with her so she too can make informed decisions about who to spend her life with. And for anyone out there who might be wondering, why on planet Earth would any man want to lock his shit up? <laughs> it's about being aroused by being submissive and masochistic. It's arousing for them to be dominated by a controlling woman. And it's also about playing psychological games. It can be a long session of foreplay for some couples. For example, the key holder tells the submissive who's locked up that his penis is her toy and she decides when it gets to be played with. But to go even deeper, I think it's about appreciating that which is rare. It's human nature to appreciate and put more value on something that is scarce. That's why original pieces of art are so pricey, for example. If there's only one of something that's coveted, it's priceless. So in this case, if the submissive in the chastity device can't easily have sex or masturbate, then the unpredictability of not knowing when he gets to again and the anticipation that builds up heightens the experience. So moving on to your questions though about chastity devices. As anecdotal evidence, I did read a lot of people with experience using them claim that their penis did shrink several inches after <laughs> discontinuing use. Um, in their own words, they described how their penis just didn't get as erect as it used to or it just didn't get as long. But they did all say that they used their devices for months or even years. It's probably less likely to happen if it's only used occasionally and for a few days. I mean, muscle does atrophy after long periods of non-use. So it's pretty plausible to me, actually, that uh, your erections wouldn't be the same after removal if you've been using them for a really long time. As far as a link to prostate cancer is concerned, there is a recent study that's been published that does say that the frequency of ejaculation is linked to a reduced risk of prostate cancer. Here's what a Huffington Post article had to say on the matter. Men who ejaculated at least 21 times a month in their 20s were 19% less likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancer than men who ejaculated no more than seven times a month, the study found. Men who ejaculated more often in their 40s were 22% less likely to get a prostate cancer diagnosis. It's important to note though that causality hasn't been proven. But since chastity devices do prevent erections and ejaculation for however long the key holder decides, you should probably really limit the use if you're going to do it. So thanks for watching and subscribing guys. Keep your letters coming to me at thenakedadvice.com. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.